Hi guys, welcome to Saturday. First off, let's all congratulate Jennifer for breaking the company record and making $500,000 in sales. We still just don't know how you do it. Okay, Carolyn, it looks like you're gonna be working with Angelica today. I'm just gonna need you to keep an extremely close eye on her. Yeah, she sucks. Probably gonna fire her next week. This stays between us. I need an extra small in there. Oh my God, you did so good today, girl. Yeah, you fucking killed it. Like a hundred out of 10, but actually it was a seven out of 10. What? Oh no, you need to be an eight out of 10 to get a raise. I need an extra, extra small in this. Can I talk to you? Yeah, let's have a little meeting. Girl talk. What's wrong with you today? Did your boyfriend break up with you? Oh, you're a lesbian? Ew. Oh, your mom died? Life is so hard, like all the things, like it's so, I just need you to push past your mom's death for today. Give me like your blood and guts. I need an extra, extra, extra small in this. Carolyn, 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 do the fucking PK on the HP of the MD that I asked you for two hours ago. They're going on a mother-daughter vacation to Hawaii. I think that they're gonna spend at least $2,000. They left, they didn't want anything, you make them want something. Miranda, come back. I hate this one. No, I don't want it, ew. Hey, first of all, let's just address the elephant in the room. Yes, I shaved my mustache. I look like a fucking plucked chicken. It sucked because I was growing it out and my sister kept telling me I looked gross and that I should shave it. Also, I gave myself a haircut. Fuck you for not noticing. Oh yeah, and then the big news, I'm actually in Mexico City right now for the next month. I'm just a lucky girl, what can I say? I know I probably should just be making some cute, vloggy, Mexico City energy type videos, but for some reason, I just feel like I need to talk about my old job. <laughs> Retail is a cold bitch, and I promise she does not love you like she keeps telling you she does. This job has stuck with me more than any of my most toxic ex-lovers ever have. So here's my funny, tragic, hopefully entertaining tale of what it was like to work at Aritzia Soho. The reason I even got a retail job in the first place is because I was going to fashion school, FIT to be specific. I felt like I needed a foot in the door in the fashion industry. What better way to gain some experience, tactile experience with clothes, than to get a job at a clothing store. But I kind of had this perception that working retail would just be like folding clothes, like giggling with the girlies in the back room, talking shit about the Aces and the Tracys and the Karens that came to shop there. Bitch, I was wrong. This job must have been the most hardcore selling position that I can imagine exists in the entire world. First of all, my first training session, the manager that trained me was the most bubbly yet robotic person I had ever met in my life. I was like, what is she doing? We did the whole training session, whatever. We're getting to know each other. We're like, hee hee hee. At the end of the training session, this manager was like, okay girlies, the number one thing you need to know about this job is that you need to have your Aritzia persona. I was like, okay, she must be exaggerating a little bit. Like this job can't be that crazy. What are they gonna have us do? First day I realized, oh, every single bitch in here has a persona and I can't even trust that these are real people, but rather Canadian brand Aritzia robots shipped directly from Vancouver and Toronto to get the job done. Everyone was like, hi, welcome to Aritzia. What's your name? I was simply terrified and intimidated by this. So I first realized that this job was gonna be a lot more than what I thought I had signed up for. When basically they gave me this giant packet of their selling strategies, which essentially entailed going up to customers the second they enter the store, watching them to see if they pick up a piece of clothing. As soon as they pick up a piece of clothing, you have to run over to her before the other sharks and get her full life story before she can get past Bay one. You had to get their name, where they were from, their deepest, darkest desires, whether they liked New York freaking city, I don't know, social security number. This was also my first time being introduced to the concept of competitive selling. Competitive selling means that you don't work for commission. It's not like you're making sales in order to make more money. I was making a flat rate, but the rate is conditional on the premise that you're gonna be able to sell at least $325 an hour. Every week they posted the list of the top, top to bottom sellers and scheduled you hours accordingly. If you're not making good sales, you're not getting hours and you're not getting money. Now $325 an hour seems like a lot. At first I was like, wow, that's at least, I need to sell like three shirts every hour. I thought I was gonna be doing nothing, but it's not just that you need to be able to make these goals of the minimum. As soon as they realize that you're able to do that, they hike it up and up 
and up. So as soon as you're making $400 an hour, they take you to the side and they're like, hunty, we want you to make five. And now we want you to make six, and now it's the weekend, and now it's Black Friday, and now you need to make $1,500 an hour. <laughs> or else they can see that you don't have enough drive and you're not hungry for that Aritzia coin. My first month working there was basically me having nightmares about the job every night, being like excluded and bullied because everyone was so clicky, like desperately trying to make sales. I had embarrassed myself so many times, like going up to people and making them so uncomfortable. It's not about being a human being anymore. Like we're forgetting the laws that like people get pissed off when you're too in their face. You're just doing whatever you can to survive in the jungle that was Aritzia. Because I was working at the Soho location, which I thought was a good idea at first. I was like, oh, it's more prestigious. It's more glamorous. All the hotties worked there. I was up against some extremely tough competition. Those girls were relentless. They did not feel embarrassment. They never stopped moving. I'm not programmed for that. I wanted to just like talk to someone and actually get to know them on like a normal human way without terrifying them. My first month, I thought I was not gonna last. My sales would be very sporadic. Some days I would go in and I would kill it. I would be on. I would just be in this different state of mind where I saw people as money signs. It didn't matter to me what they thought of me. I just wanted to make them buy as much shit as possible. And then there was other days when I looked in the mirror and I was like, I hate you, first of all. You're not gonna do good, second of all. Third of all, you're embarrassing yourself by talking to people. It was like this back and forth, back and forth. And I thought, okay, if I can't be consistent with my sales, I'm gonna quit, I'm gonna get fired. The way that Aritzia operates with the way that you're treated is directly correlated to how good your sales are. So if I was having a good sales day, all the managers would be like, oh my gosh, babe, you're killing it. You're so cool, you're so cute. And then if you're having a bad day, everyone would just like awkwardly ignore you act like you were the slime and the little sluggies of the earth. So naturally you start to correlate how good your sales are with how you feel about yourself and your self-esteem on a day-to-day -day basis. So I would wake up in the morning and look at myself in the mirror and be like, fucking bitch. If you don't sell today, you're nothing. You're a piece of ugly shit. But then everything started to change when I became good at my job. And specifically when they changed me from being a regular floor seller to a fitting room seller. Let me explain one thing. So at Aritzia, there are no mirrors inside of the individual dressing rooms. Every single person that wants to try and close has to step out and look at the main mirror so that they're under the judging eyes of anyone who may be around in the premises. One of the fucking genius tactics of Aritzia is that they have sellers stationed in the fitting rooms at all times to sell to the people trying on. Oh, Carolyn's good at forming connections with people so we can just put her in one spot where she doesn't have to worry about her sales and can just focus on making these bitches think that she's their friend and thus being able to do whatever she wants with them. And yes, I was very good at this. Working in the fitting rooms at Aritzia made me feel like some sort of retail god. I started to just go up to people and ask them random questions. I literally blocked most of this out so I can't remember what I said. I would just kind of form natural connections with people to the point where they trusted me and then I, I would slip in. Those don't look like they're fitting you quite right. Like, let me get you something better. Doing this four days a week, 32 hours a week, my brain broke. I no longer feared people. They're my little puppets. I can get them to do anything. I can get them to buy whatever stupid, ugly shirt that I want them to. And I got really addicted to the validation from the managers to me. It's not like you just do your job and go home. It's like this whole system of indoctrination. I stopped thinking about money. I wasn't even able to pay my own rent because I was making nothing. And I was doing a job that people were making twice as much money as me, but like they knew that I was a little bitch and they didn't have to pay me shit. And I would just keep doing it because they would feed me breadcrumbs of like, oh my God, you're doing so good. And I was like, thank you. That's all I needed. I know you nosy little fucks probably want some juicy details. So I'll tell you about some celebrity interactions that I had. First on the chopping block, Noah Cyrus. So one of the girls that I worked with had a thing and her thing was that she was best friends with Noah Cyrus. And we would hear about this quite frequently. Little did I know how real it was gonna become. One day, I'm like spacing out, it's nighttime, I'm fixing some ties. There was always things I needed to tie. I turn around, Noah Cyrus is sitting on the little bench staring at me. And I was like, fuck. At first I was gonna be like, oh, hi, Noah Cyrus. But it's so awkward when you see a celebrity cause like they don't know who you are. So I don't want them to know that I know who they are. Also, it's awkward when you see someone you're not necessarily a huge fan of. What am I gonna say to Noah Cyrus? Oh, I'm sorry you have to follow in Miley's shadow. That must be really hard. Tell your sister that I wanna fuck her. Like, what am I supposed to say? So I just didn't say anything. I just kept like tying my shit and looking over and she would look at me and like I would look at her. The fifth time this happened, she like 
yells at me, hey, you're really pretty. And I was like, oh my God, thank you, you too. Noah Cyrus. And of course I felt obliged to keep talking to her. So what are you lady, what are you guys up to later? Where are you staying, ha ha ha. And she was just like, oh, like over here. She just wanted to tell me I'm pretty and then have me shut the fuck up. Also, I think she was really high, but she was so sweet. The next crazy thing that happened that really broke my brain, our Lord and Savior come at last, Lana Del Rey showed up. I was in the worst mood, just like spaced out, doing my same stupid tasks. One of my managers comes up and she's like, nobody freak out, but like Lana Del Rey is here. I don't want anyone making a big deal out of it. We're alone, but like Lana is in the building. I literally started tearing up. I <laughs> no, she's not. I turned the corner of the dressing room and I looked out and there she was in her dirty little white kids, no makeup, cop boyfriend in hand. I didn't have it in me to say anything to her. I knew I was gonna ruin her night. Like she was obviously incognito. She did not want me to fucking talk to her. Like who am I? So I just like hid behind a jacket, like softly cried while looking at her. She kind of like glanced over at me and was like, I'm kind of proud of myself for not saying anything because Lana got out of the store safely. Nobody noticed. Two minutes later, all of the girlies from the top floor came down and were like, oh my God, where's Lana, where's Lana? We heard she's here, we heard she's here. And I was like, ladies, she's gone. Leave her the fuck alone. My head manager came to me and was like, oh, Carolyn, where's Lana Del Rey? I heard she was here. She's gone, Janet. What the fuck would you have said to her anyways? What would you have said to Lana Del Rey, please? Oh, I would have told her how much I enjoyed her music. <laughs> She hears that all the time. Not a surprise I didn't get fired for that. So it went on for a year and it was basically this very dramatic swing of a pendulum where I fucking hated it. I couldn't stand it. I thought I would have to quit within a few weeks. And then me feeling like it was my entire life, ego and everything was based on how good I was at this job. So one day I just had a complete mental breakdown. Came into work and I felt awful. I was just like kind of thinking about how much I hated myself. And my managers kept being like, what's wrong, Carolyn? What's wrong, Carolyn? We can tell something's wrong. I just started sobbing and told my manager that I needed a break. This job is getting to me. It's sucked me in and spat me out. If I don't act soon, I'm going to lose my mind. I'm lose my goddamn mind. So I took a month break. I felt like my soul returned to my body and it dawned on me that I needed to get the fuck out. They told me they were gonna give me a $3 raise. They're like, wow, Carolyn, you've really moved up in the company so fast. We could see you being a manager or possibly working in corporate one day. And I was like reeled back in. I was like, okay, maybe I'll stay. And maybe this could lead to something in my future. But now after two months, my manager came up to me. and was like, okay, Carolyn, like I need to talk to you about something. Oh my god, I feel so bad, like, but remember how we told you we're gonna give you a $3 raise? It's actually just gonna be a $1 raise. Like, we changed our minds. I was like, what the fuck? The moment when I realized just how culty Aritzia was, was when I tried to quit. That's how you know you're part of a cult. You know, you'll be having a great time, you'll be like, getting along with everyone so well. Maybe it's a little abusive sometimes. And all of a sudden you're like, okay. You know, I think I've gained what I need to from this experience and now I'd like to go. And they're just like, what do you mean go? I texted the head manager and I was like, hey, Mrs. Aritzia, I'm done here. I've got a new job. They're gonna pay me twice as much working at a restaurant where I belong, honestly. And she said, let's talk tomorrow. She brings me to the back room and she's like, what did we do wrong, Carolyn? We're your family. And I was like, you know, I need to start paying my own rent. I would rather make twice as much money doing half as much work. I don't understand. You're leaving us? And that whole weekend, my last weekend there, I was kind of killing it with sales. I was like making them want me hard for some reason. It was like a weird exiting flex. Anytime I made a sale, my managers would come to me and be like, you're not really leaving. All right, Carolyn, like I'll meet you halfway. Your new job's gonna pay you 30 an hour. I'll give you 25. I was like, bitch, you think I love you that much that I'm gonna accept $5 an hour less just to stay in your rinky dinky little company? So I did eventually get out of there and I quickly realized that Aritzia was more than a fucking job. I like couldn't cope inside out in the big bad world without it. Why isn't anybody, why doesn't anybody need my advice on fashion? Why does no one care what I'm wearing today? I think I actually really missed my Aritzia persona. Aritzia taught me to be a relentless bitch that isn't afraid of anything. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time. But for now, adios pachachos. All right, now do a little dance. Jassy! <laughs>